Hi, I'm Owen from REST Australia. Thanks for tuning in to the REST Network. Before we get into today's show, there are a few things we have to go over. Firstly, what you're about to hear and see is limited to general information only. It's not personal financial advice like you get from a financial planner. Also, it's important to remember that past performance is not indicative of future performance. That means that anything that's happened in the past, or we say today, is not necessarily going to reflect what happens in the future. Lastly, please consider that any of the guests or myself are featuring on this program may have a financial interest in some of the products or shares mentioned. That's enough from me. I hope you enjoyed today's program. Kate Campbell, welcome to this episode of the Australian Finance Podcast, a very special one. Yes, one of our first bonus episodes for the year. Yeah, and this is extra, extra, extra special because we are doing a bit of a screen recording for this one. We figured we're going to do this one in person in the Melbourne office, but we thought even in lockdown, we got to still do this so people can see what we're talking about Mm. because we're talking about product disclosure statements, those things, PDSs, we always tell you to go and read them, but how on earth do you read them? What are you looking for? What are the key points? Why do you even need one? These, this is what we're talking about. And you'll be able to access this. If you're listening to this, you can follow the link in the player. There'll be a link to the YouTube version where you can watch what we're talking about and say good day to us anyway. Um, so, Kate, maybe let's just start simple terms, PDSs. What does that even mean? Like what is one, all those types of things. (laughs) So if you've ever seen an ad for an industry super fund on the TV, in the very small print, they'll say, read the PDS or read the product disclosure statement. So that's the legal document that the super funds are required to provide that really have a comprehensive, very comprehensive outline of all the nitty gritty details to do with that super fund. So if you just go to your super funds website, you'll see all the nice marketing, you'll see the performance figures, hopefully positive ones after the last 12 months. Um, But they won't tell you all the nitty gritty details, like all the different levels of fees. They might provide high level fees. Um, They won't provide you information on where the funds are located, how tax is dealt with, until you look at this legal document that can often be very long. I think one of the industry funds I was looking at yesterday, the super PDS was about 80 pages. So that's a lot for any one person to go through. Yeah. And this is the thing I think we're chatting just off air before. The PDSs that you get from super funds, they're probably the most important PDS you could ever read, but they're also probably the most confusing because Mm. sometimes there are multiple PDSs. Then you have insurance guides. Then you have like a fee guide. Then you have the investment guide, which is different to the PDS. So it's all kind of tangled in together, but different, separate. Um, So we're going to try and when we do this, this is why it was important for us to show you the screen so you could see what we're looking at and what we would look at. Um, so when do you need a PDS? Like when should you get one um, and who's required to give it to you, I guess? Yeah. So if you are thinking about investing in a new product, I mean, today we're going to specifically talk about super fund PDSs, but um, managed funds, exchange traded funds, they all provide product disclosure statements. If you're going to a new investment platform, they'll have a product disclosure statement. Even the micro-investing apps, um, generally I've seen they provide a product disclosure statement too. So it's really a document that you want to read before you invest in a financial product. Um, and it complains, it, sorry, it contains all the information <laughs> about the fees, commissions, benefits, risks, as well as how to complain. That's where I got that word from there. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's, it's certainly a document you want to read hopefully beforehand. But if you haven't read it before, which I mean, I didn't read it before I invested in my very first super funds um, many years ago. So maybe today is the opportunity to go and one, go to your super fund, log in, find the product disclosure statement. If you're at a large industry fund that has a website page that has six different product disclosure statements, because some of the industry funds have a lot of products, just send them a message or give them a call to make sure you're reading the right product disclosure statement for what you're invested in Mm. and not one for a different product. So I think that's the first step. Um, And that's certainly what we'd want you to do after this episode, or maybe even during, if you want to pause throughout, go to your Superfund website, get the copy of the PDS, make sure it's the right one and have it open and ready. Yeah. We're going to, we're going to use two examples. We've got Australian Super, which is an industry super fund and has 
I'm just on the screen now, has multiple PDSs. Yeah. Um, and then we're going to use Australian Ethical, which has a very easy to follow um, PDS. It's got a few bright colors in there as well. So um, we're going to use two examples at different types of super funds, but they're all trying to do the same thing. Take your money and invest it for you for your retirement. So, okay. So you get a PDS when you basically get to invest in a product or do something with your money. So an ETF has one, but typically you don't see it when you're in your brokerage account because it's on the issuer's website. So if you invest with beta shares, that will have a PDS that's on the website. Yeah, it's uh, up to you to go hunting yeah. for it. Yeah. Actually, it's interesting because beta shares actually combine, they do combine PDSs where they put heaps of their funds in one PDS. I'm going to guess and say that's probably cheaper for them to do. But <laughs> um, yeah, some some PDSs are actually really limited and they don't provide a lot of information. They're more like just the bare bones, like the legal stuff that they have to provide. Um, whereas other PDSs, and I'm looking at the Australian ethical one here, it's only eight pages, but it does provide enough to make a decent decision. Um, you know, some PDSs are actually really, really good. It's one of those areas where you can't let, it, it, the lawyers don't want to let the people that want to be creative with the document in, and the creative people don't want to read the one that the lawyer has produced. Mm. So it's kind of, you hope to get somewhere halfway in between. I think we are with these two PDSs. Okay. Yeah. And the, just to note, the PDS shouldn't mm. make you feel really confused. So mm. if you are, if you're reading it and you just have no idea what they're saying, actually give the company a call, um, send them a message and ask, because they're not allowed to make the, the PDS purposely, purposely confusing. Um, they're supposed to make it um, understandable. So it's not full of legal jargon. I mean, there's some stuff that they're required to put in by by law, but they're meant to make it understandable for the retail consumer. Yeah, ING, the bank, if you know, you know the bank, ING, they uh, they used to have PDSs, and I used to read them, and they're actually really good to read. Same with um, the one from RACV, RACQ, you know, all those um, that family goes on. But that brand of PDS was actually really easy to read. Um, you know, they had big font. It was really nicely laid out. They had charts and images and, and just really helpful explainers as you went through. So some of them are good. Some of them are really boring. We're going to be honest, mm. uh, but you should persevere and just focus on these key elements that we're about to talk to. Okay, Kate, I'm going to try and share my screen. This is a world first. So um, yeah, we've never we've never tried doing this before. Yeah, let's see how we go. So um, a year plus so. of lockdowns and Zooms and we're just figuring out share screen now. Yeah. So you can see, can you see my screen? I can. Hopefully everyone else can see it. Yeah. Vinique, can you see that? Yeah. Cool. Okay. So we've got the Australian Super website in front of us. And as you can see, this is the product disclosure page. Um, and there's a bunch of different PDSs that you can access here. Yeah. Because Australian Super, as one of the, the largest super funds in Australia, does have a lot of members in it. So they have quite a few different options available. Mm. So the first one here is the one we're going to go with, which is the largest division. This is the one that I'm part of, the Australian Super Plan. So just click download there, let that come up. And, and most of the time, you just need to Google the name of your Super Fund Plus PDS and you'll come to a page um, that has all that information. And always make sure, um, sometimes Google might store an old version, but make sure you're looking at the most recent version of the product disclosure statement because the funds might... Um, updated on a, a yearly or every so often when something new happens or they launch a new product. Mm -hmm. Point. So, so I think this one's the, the most recent one I was yeah. looking. So you can see on Australian Super, it's the 29th of May, 2021. We're recording this in July, 2021. That's pretty recent for PDS, um, for, by PDS standards. July, 2021 here for Australian Ethical. So it's safe to say, I'd say that we're, we're dealing with the most recent, but just keep an eye on that. Um, Okay, so Kate, the first thing that we should be thinking about, I guess, is what? Yeah, so I think the the first thing, even just looking at the front page there, it actually just even gives you a high level overview of what's covered in the super fund PDS. And um, even if you're new to super and what is the product, the the PDS, especially for Australian super, does give you an overview of what is superannuation and how it all works. So that's a good good start. I think it's. Um, they use it slightly as a, a sales pitch as well. Um, but it gives you an information even here, what is super, it gives you uh, a good overview of what is super guarantee contributions, the different types of contributions as well. 
Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, I think this PDS, when I was having a look through it the other day, does give you quite a solid overview of everything and how it works. So even if you're new to super, just give it a read to have a really good understanding of the basics. Mm -hmm. um, and then it, there might be a bit of a sales pitch in there about how it all works and the benefits of the company. Yep. Um, I think, yeah, sorry, go on. Oh, so you might be able to skip that bit at the, the time and then um, even just looking at a bit of the overview of the fund um, and how super works, that's a good start uh, mm. before moving on to what's probably the most important place to look. I, I think fees are a good starting place often. Okay, we'll go to fees. And if we've got the, there's the Australian ethical fees and I'll just go down to the fees and costs for this uh, Australian super. It doesn't have a hyperlink. Yeah, Control F is a, a tool we use a lot in the industry when we're looking through a lot of PDSs. So if I'm just jumping from one to another, I'm just going to be doing control F a lot because some can get a lot longer than, um, what is this, 28 pages. Some, if it's a complicated product, could be hundreds of pages. So mm. um, yeah, control F, and then it's going to give you the fees here. So Australian Super is giving you a fee overview for the balanced option. I think that's the key point, right, Kate? Like, So it's that in a PDS, so this is the key thing I want everyone to understand that's listening or watch, watching this. Um, inside a super fund, there are multiple investment options. Mm. Right? So you can have a balanced option, a conservative option. That's actually what our next podcast is about. You can have any of these different options. And depending on which one you select, you will probably pay a different fee. So you pay a fee to the super fund, but you also pay a fee depending on which one you select. Mm. So when you come into the PDS and it's set, an Australian super says fees and other costs for the balanced option, but then you come into the Australian ethical one and it says um, for the balanced option, you've got to make sure that that's actually the thing that you're investing in. You might be investing in the growth option or the index diversified option or the ESG option or whatever. Your fees might not exactly match what is shown on this page. I just wanted to make that apparent because depending on which one you choose, your fees might not exactly match what's in the PDS. Yeah, and they often do pick the balanced option or their, their standard default option um, in the product disclosure statement. So you might have to then go and look at, hey, I'm actually in the high growth option. What are my investment fees? The mm -hmm. admin fees are often similar for each of the funds um, and, and the other fees um but the investment fee is the one that's definitely going to change depending on options. And I know, especially with the balance, sometimes that can be the cheaper option, but um, mm. it's worth comparing it there. So you and, might actually have to uh, calculate it with your own fees. And that's why when we go to, when you look, when you watch our next episode or listen to our next episode, which is about your, super, your options in super and what you can pick and choose, there is actually a new website that was brought out in July, 2021 by the Australian government. And that uses the my super or balanced option. So, which is basically, it's almost always the balanced option. So it's not comparing everything. If you're a younger person, if you're 20, in your 20s, if you're in your 30s, even your 40s and 50s, chances are the balanced option may not be appropriate for you. So you might want to be more growth focused, in which case the fees will change a little bit depending on the PDS. Like for example, um, when we originally wrote up the, when I originally wrote up the money and budgeting course for for the RASC education site, when I suggested a super fund to go with, I was really conscious that some of the best super funds in the industry have really really low fees on their, their biggest product. Like um, Host Plus has really low fees on one particular option. Um, which is substantially lower than the Australian super option at the time, or it was. But a lot of the other strategies that they had, like the growth strategy and the high growth strategy, were actually a lot more expensive. Mm -hmm. So if I said, if I just said to people, go with Host Plus, and then they just went with Host Plus and they didn't know which option they were choosing, there's a chance that they could have ended up with a really expensive option. Um, so you're just going to be mindful of that. I just want to keep calling that out. Okay. So, Kate, we've got the, the fees um, for Australian ethical here. You can yeah. see it's 0 0.64. Yeah, so I think with this, you need to, there's a few different fees. So firstly, you've got, you want to look at what the investment fees are for your product. And so this is just showing you the balanced options. So you're going to have to look at each individual product if you want to compare different. So if you wanted to go in the, I'm not sure if Australian Ethical has a high growth option, but probably something similar to that. So if you want to have a look at that, you're going to have to look at what their investment fees are. Mm -hmm. So 
And it will give you an example calculation as well. And then you've got to look at the admin fees, which is usually the, the fees for doing all of the, the paperwork and the taxes and all the sort of running the company behind the scenes. And so that's another fee. And sometimes it puts it out as a $100 per year. So it might say in this case, it's $97 per annum for the Australian ethical admin fee plus 0.29% of your account balance per year. But some other funds, if you go to the host plus one, it is a weekly a weekly fee of $2.25 plus up to 0.04% per annum. So you can see how already they're calculating it differently. One's giving you a yearly plus something and one's a weekly fee plus something. So it already makes it a little bit more challenging to compare. Yeah, it does indeed. Um, I'm trying to bring up the Australian ethical growth strategy to see, here we go. I think I've got it on my screen. So this is um, taken from their website in July, 2021. And you can see the type of fee or cost as an investment fee across the different strategies. So the Australian ethical balance one, which is the one that we were just looking at in the PDS, that's the one that's used 0.64%, but the growth strategy is 0.99%. Mm-hmm. Now, when, we're not saying that that's bad, but that's not what we're saying. We're just using this as an example to point things out. Like Australian, we wouldn't, to be honest, we wouldn't use Australian ethical if we thought something really sinister was going on. So um, this is, yeah, you can just see, you know, then they've got the advocacy option here, which is 1.2%. And I imagine the higher fee there is maybe they say is justified because they advocate on behalf of their investors for ethical investing and for sustainability and those types of things in the companies that they invest in, which takes time and money. You know, you have to employ people to, to be advocates. So um, that may be justified. But yeah, you make a good point about even though the information is presented in this very easy table in the PDS, there are differences within the different options. Like if we come mm. back into Australian ethicals balanced option in the PDS, we can see there's got indirect costs. So zero point to one two percent per year um so you that's an extra cost associated with running the fund and you can see here on the australian super option it doesn't actually have a number it just leaves it blank and it says see additional explanation of fees and costs and so you've just this is probably the most important table for understanding the fees and costs overall mm. but you might need to do more digging to actually find out what you're paying yeah, and especially because if they're only showing the balanced option, you do need to go and actually find out what are the different you might have if you want to compare high growth between two different funds, you might actually have to do a bit more digging and a few calculations yourself. Um, as some of the super comparison sites do, you can compare like a high growth to a high growth. Um, and hopefully it takes in all the fees, but it is good to get an understanding of the different types of fees, the investment fee, admin fee probably uh, possibly indirect cost ratios. So um, taking all of that into account when you're making comparisons are really important. Mm. Yeah. And this is, yeah. So I'm just trying to navigate the Australian Super website in a separate tab here. And I I really just can't even, it's just really complicated for me, to be honest. Um, But they, you got to remember too, at the very start, we selected, we, we chose which PDS we were looking at. If you are in a different option, You've got to make sure when you're looking at the the website, are you looking at the fees that are associated with that particular plan within the super fund? So we chose the Australian super option, which was the one that I'm in. Um, But then there's the TTR income accounts and there's, you know, the the overall super account and then there's the choice income accounts. So there's multiple different Mm. plans within it. So just keep all of this in mind when you're studying it you kind of want to make sure that the option you have is the right PDS. You're looking at that. Then within that, which investment are you in? Um, And then are there any blanks in that PDS table that you might need to follow up separately? Yeah. And even giving them a call or sending them a message and saying, if, if you want to, for instance, you're interested in the growth fund, asking them, can you give me a full cost breakdown of $50,000 invested in the growth fund for a year? Um, Mm. and try and that might help. So they might be able to pull out all those figures for you. Um, And then if you're wanting to compare between a few different super providers, that might make it a little bit easier there. Mm -hmm. How about, okay, I'm just scrolling down the page here to how super is taxed. Um, This is obviously really important because we've got, Mm. we've got fees associated with the fund itself Obviously, we've got insurance, which is a whole other thing as well, by the way. People get yeah. confused between the fees for actually the super fund, but then also 
all the super premiums that are getting paid. Yeah. But then the, the other thing is tax. We won't go into necessarily specifics here. I'll just give you an overview. But super funds, most big super funds like Australian Ethical, um, Australian Super, they are taxed at 15%. So your money inside the super fund is paying tax at 15%. Why 15%? Well, because that's typically lower than most people pay outside of super. So if we earn a wage, we're probably paying more than 15% tax. Like our employer is taking that out for us. So by it being lower inside super, it actually grows faster because there's less taken out by the government every year. And so there's a few different explanations here on the PDS you can see of how money is put into your super fund. So it's taxed on the way in. Um, if it's from your employer or if you make a, a contribution as part of like salary sacrifice, which we know is very common, um, you can also put money in, which we've talked about before, as after tax. So that's where, let's say, I get you know my wage every month. Uh, let's say for you know it's it's two thousand dollars, three thousand dollars, whatever. Um, I can choose to put that money straight into my super fund, and let's say I put two hundred bucks in. I can choose to put that in, and it goes straight in without being taxed. Um, but if I claim a tax deduction for that, then they're going to take some money out as well. Mm. So it's it's a bit confusing, but there are some basics here, like tax file number. I feel like that's one of the important things, right? I think that's taken care of with MyGov nowadays, but maybe there's some old super funds you have you don't know about. Yeah. And once you start reading through different product disclosure statements, you'll a lot of the tax stuff is very standardized. So you'll be reading very similar statements across different product disclosure statements because, I mean, this is stuff coming from the Australian Taxation Office, so the super fund can't just make up their own tax rules. So you'll you'll get used to very similar statements coming through in different product disclosure statements as you get comfortable with them. Mm. Um, and so I guess like maybe I won't log into my Australian super portal here, <laughs> but um, you can actually go into your member portal with all of these big super funds and you can see what your account is invested in. You can see what's coming in and what's going out, the tax you're paying, the fees yeah. that are getting deducted for insurance. You can Most of them nowadays, you can actually adjust just your insurance via that portal. Just be aware that if you do make those changes inside your portal, that that could trigger something that you're not aware of. So say you can't just go, like I couldn't just go into my super account and be like, I want $100 million of life insurance. <laughs> that if you did that, well, they would probably reject it, but also it could trigger something like a massive waiting period that you would not be eligible for that if something was to happen. Um, so all of these things influence your super balance and how much fees you pay. And also, you know, it could also impact, you know, your tax. Um, mm. And so you've got to be mindful that you do actually read the PDS and you understand this. Um there's a heap of things here. I think one of the things for any of our, uh, particularly our older listeners, or even some of our listeners that are thinking of using the first home super saver scheme, which is where you can put money into super and you can get some out, is that there may be tax paid on withdrawals of money. So keep that in mind too. A lot of that's written on the PDS. If you need more information, you can go to the ATO website for that. Kate, this is pretty um, it's pretty scary stuff. We've got tax, yeah. we've got fees. What about, and, tell us something fun. Like how do we invest money and what should we be thinking about? <laughs> like, um, I guess one of the, the, maybe the more fun things is the investment objective. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if it's called the same thing in every product disclosure statement, but it should. Okay. Here we go. Here investment we go. return objective. Yep. Again, this is just telling it to you for their, um, their default fund. So, um, if you just Google something like invest, uh, not uh, control F and search for something like investment objective, it'll tell you what the goal is for that balanced option in mm -hmm. this, in both of these cases. So um, it's actually telling you here what the goal of the super product is to do and what it's aiming to do over the next 10 years. Yep. So in this case, we've got the Australian ethical super. This is the balanced option for accumulators. Um, it says, and I quote, to provide a diversified portfolio that has an appropriate balance between income and capital growth investments with medium to high levels of risk, it aims to achieve returns of 3.5% per year above inflation over 10 years. So inflation, you can find out on the RBA website, that's just rba.gov.au. Inflation, you can just think of inflation as that, you know, the 
the the increase of a cup of coffee cup cup of coffee every year it's like one or two percent um and then we'll compare that with the australian super one so they just have dot points to beat cpi otherwise known as inflation by four percent over the medium to long term and to beat the median balanced fund over that time as well so basically to say we want to do better than average and we want to get more than you know four percent above cpi so Mm -hmm. I think the the key here is don't just take what they say here and be like, hmm, I like four percent more than I like three like percent. Yeah. That's not <laughs> that's not the way that it works necessarily. Um, you want to then go and study the track record and all that sort of stuff. Um, so, Kate, in and, and by the way, we'll get to that in the next episode. How do you study the track record? Yeah, that sort of stuff. Um, so, minimum investment time frame that's probably a, a worthwhile thing to look at as well right yeah that's another so that's going to give you an indication of if you're thinking of choosing that op- option how long should you be considering uh being invested in that option so if you're really close to retirement that's probably really important as well if you're as well as if you're a long term away from retirement so if you're not retiring for 40 or 50 years and you're investing in a product that has a very short minimum investment time frame that's staying um, one to two years because possibly it's a cash or a defensive fund, then maybe it might be worth thinking, is this the right product for me? Whereas mm. if you're if you've got 10, 20 years before retirement and you're looking at the minimum investment time frame and it's saying, oh, at least 10 years, you might think, oh, that might be potentially something that's more appropriate to my needs. So it it gives you a very high level indication of uh, how long you'd be wanting to invest in that fund. Mm. Yeah, and we can see that um, both Australian Ethical and um, Australian Super have broken it down here to make it really, really simple for you to understand. Like, um, Australian Ethical has this wonderful, colourful chart. Um, I, I imagine you guys looking at this thinking, oh, that's a very nice, pretty chart. I think it's cool too. Um, so you can see here that that Australian ethical kind of has this chart where it's got from bottom left to top right. For those of you that are listening, um, it shows all of the different, it's got the the potential return, but then it's also got the risk and it kind of shows the balance of that going up over time. And it's so at the very top end at the riskiest end, but also at the potential, potential highest return is Australian shares and international shares right down the other end where it's the lower expected risk, lower expected return. You've got the defensive option. Um, and this is a really interesting thing that Australian Super does inside its PDS, and it also does it on its website. It says it's used um, a lot of its historical data, and it said the estimated number of negative yearly returns that we expect over a 20-year period. So they're saying over the next 20 years, how many of those years do we expect your super fund, your super, to go backwards? based on what we know from the past. And they've said for the balanced option, we expect that to be five out of every 20 years. In other words, that's like one in every four years, you can expect your super balance to go backwards. As you and I know, Kate, that's when most people make a decision about their super fund Mm -hmm. is when it goes backwards in that one year and they forget to study it over a very long period of time. So, you know, there's that saying that we're all high risk investors until the next market crash. So we all pick the growth option because that sounds great. Then we experience one of these four years and, oh, no, that's not the right option for me. So be really mindful that when you're selecting these options, the time frame is really important. So you've got to make sure that if you are taking risk, you're balancing that over a long period of time. But you're also being realistic with yourself. It's probably going to be a bit scary at times, like in 2020 when COVID happened. A lot of super funds were stressing out. Um, because their members were pulling money out for whatever reason. Um, We heard that story of the 26-year-old young lady uh, from Queensland who had 50% of her money in cash and the other 50% in the the defensive option. And then the stock market returned 30% over the next year. So if she stayed in that option, she's basically lost 30% of her retirement savings, maybe Mm. more if you factor in compounding. So... um, this is a really important decision. Uh, Kate, at risk of this going for too long, is there anything else we should be looking at here? Like, should we be looking at this pie chart? I noticed they both have pie charts. Yeah, I think that's definitely something you can look at on the product page because that's going to be very different. The asset allocation, I think that's probably something for um, a future episode, but that's 
the asset allocation. So what percentage of your property, uh, sorry, your super funds invested in property and Australian shares. So you can look at look at that percentage breakdown on the product page. But I think the last thing we need to mention quickly before we wrap up, and it's probably not something that should be talked about that quickly, is risks yes. um, of, of the super funds. So um, often once you get comfortable with reading product disclosure statements, again, you'll see the risks sound very similar as you go on. Um, so they'll say things like don't pass returns, don't equal future returns. So you'll see that sentence a lot. Um, things like you may lose some or all of your money. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, so really they're covering all bases here, but it's a good idea to have a read through um, some different product disclosure statements just to understand the different language they use when talking about risks of superannuation and any investment product does have risk. So it's good to get comfortable with what those statements say and what they potentially mean. Mm. So, you know, uh, yeah, I a hundred percent agree with you here. This is a really important point. Um, I tend to be one of those skim readers, Kate, you know, <laughs> you, know you know how it is. Um, so, I tend to look at this and like, yep, no worries, done, 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 done. But actually, you know, if you do have, if you've downloaded the PDS to your computer or to your laptop, to your phone, actually, you might want to go through with the highlighter function on the app and actually just highlight some of the things that you learn as you go through. So things like, oh, actually, you know, returns aren't guaranteed. So many people think that they're guaranteed. Okay, that might be new to you. The laws may change. Okay, so that might affect um, if I'm planning to retire in 40 years, if the laws change 50 different ways between now and then is super where I want to be investing all of my money or should I split some of it out and have it in ETFs or manage funds or whatever, you know, go through and actually think carefully mm. about these risks because they are really important. Um, yeah. Th- and so many apply to just investing in general. So it's good to um, start thinking about them. If you don't understand what one of them means, ask your super fund, do a bit of Googling, ask your financial advisor, um, ask some friends if they know, um, so you can get an idea because it will, a lot of these things like past returns don't equal future returns. Um, that's this is just a general um, thing to know about investing. So that's a, a good one that if you don't know what that means, actually investigate it. Mm. And so, you know, there there's this, I guess we mentioned briefly, but the, and we'll mention this again in the next episode. Um, there's the Your, Your Super Comparison Tool launched by the Australian government available by the ATO website. And it goes through and it compares the balanced funds, so or the, the my super option. So you can go in and you can you can see which funds over a very long period of time have performed well, and which funds have the highest fees on average according to the PDS. Remember, there are limitations with that. You might not be the person that's in the PDS option. You might you might have that super fund, but that might not be the one that you're in. Your your strategy might be different. So there's a lot to think about, but definitely the PDS is a great place to start. We've talked about the risks. We've talked about choosing your investment option, learning about the super fund as well. That's also at the top. Um, How super works is in there. We've got a free course on this. Uh, We're obviously doing the podcast on it so you can get a better sense of it. Um, The investment objectives, what to look for, um, how many years, you know, it might be negative. Uh, we'll talk about the asset allocation or how your money is actually invested in, in, a, in another episode. Fees and costs. We talked about the investment fee. Um, it changes depending on which option you have. The admin fee can be, as Kate said, per year, or it can be you know, per year plus a percentage or per week. Um, and then there are some other incidental fees that you might pay, like um, costs associated also with the fund that the fund doesn't pay, you have to pay. So, so much to go on, Kate. Mm. Good, good episode to talk about a really dry, dry topic for a lot of people. But um, yeah. you know, you can get your PDS for anything. It's worth for super. It is worth it. You, if you do it once, you do it right for the rest of your life. Make sure you yeah. know what you're getting. It's your money. Think about it. Yeah, definitely understand it. Ask the super company questions. They've got lots of people that are behind the screen that can help answer those questions. So don't be afraid to ask or talk to a financial advisor. Um, And I'd really encourage you, if you haven't already, uh, schedule some time in your calendar this weekend to sit down, get the PDS, get the digital highlighter or the physical highlighter and go through and work out what you understand, what you don't, and then make make it a point to actually go and research those things. And then, yep, go onto your MyGov account and compare your super with the new MySuper comparison tool. Yep, cool. Great advice. All right, Kate, I can stop sharing my screen. And for everyone that watched 
um, us on YouTube. Hello, thanks for tuning in. And for those of you that are listening, as always, it's a pleasure. You can access the video online. So it might be something you can even do with your partner. Get your get your super funds up and compare and start looking at what you've actually got. Cool. Kate, as always, thanks for taking some time to join me. Great. Great episode. Thanks, Owen. Cheers.